Hey guys, uh, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub and my uh, Venus Flytrap 60 day update. Uh, either 60 day or two month, however you want to look at it. Uh, it's been about 60 days. Uh, I'm going to say uh, not to the day exactly, but it's really close, um, almost two months. Uh, but I wanted to give you guys an update on my Venus Flytraps. I purchased these from Walmart uh, two months ago and it wasn't looking good there for a little bit so i'm kind of excited to bring you this update today uh, real quick though guys before we get too much into this update uh, i just wanted to again thank you for being here um, subscribing to my channel is something that i would appreciate immensely uh, if you subscribe to the channel you'll get updates on these venus flight traps so you can kind of continue to see how they do um, i also plan on opening a carnivorous plant nursery someday it's def it's my dream uh, and if, if uh, you subscribe to the channel it's something that really helps me and supports me in that dream so I uh, just wanted to kind of throw that out there and uh, subscribe to the channel, giving the video a like, sharing the video, any of that stuff really helps me out a lot. Uh, but anyway, back to the reason you're here, these plants. Uh, so yeah, so let me cut to this real quick and I'm going to show you what they look like on day one and then also what they look like on um, day 30. Okay, uh, now that you've seen that, just to give you kind of an, uh, an idea of where we're at from um, the first time, and you can see on that 30 day mark, these guys were not looking good. Um, the, I actually thought that they were gonna die. I really didn't think they were gonna make it. Um, and then they started getting a lot of new growth. You can see in that last video that they, they didn't look great, but they did at least have a little bit of new growth. Um, but now you can really see uh, that there's a lot of new growth in these. Um, you can also see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this back a little bit and I'm gonna pull this one out. Um, I wanna show this to you guys. Uh, you can see that these guys are doing work on flies. Uh, so you can see there, there's a fly there in that one. Uh, you can see those two there, there's two flies. There's one in that one over there and then one to the left and one to the right. Uh, so you can see that these are doing, and actually, if you look right there, that one has a fly and that one has a fly. So those two are both close. So these are, and I am not feeding these. Actually, I think that one might have a fly right there too. Either that, no, I don't think that one. I think that's just a newer growth. Um, so you can see that I'm not feeding these guys flies. These guys stay outside. Um, I give them as much sun exposure as possible. Uh, one of the big problems I'm having right now is we have a lot of smoke uh, in the Pacific Northwest. So they're not getting much sun in probably the last week or two. Uh, which is really frustrating because they were really, really doing good and it seems like they kind of halted a little bit uh, when all of this uh, smoke started rolling in. So they're not getting as much direct sun as I would like. Um, but you can see all the new growth on there. You can really see that they're starting to come up and they're really, they're really catching flies. I know you're not supposed to overfeed these guys and I'm not because I'm not feeding them anything. Um, but you can just see just being outside, they're catching a lot of flies. Here's another one. Uh, you can see that there's another fly there. Um, you can see there's some new growth at the bottom of this one. This one actually has some kind of neat little, <laughs> some little guys down here that are kind of coming in at the bottom. Let me see if I can focus in on that. Yeah, you can see all those little tiny ones down there that are coming in. Uh, but you can see these ones, they're not getting as big as I would like. Uh, and I think that might be because they're not getting enough sun. Um, I'd like to see the traps get a little more red and a little taller. Um, right now you can see they're just not very tall. Um, they're, they almost look like they're kind of stunted in terms of height. Um, I know when I first got them, they were probably, I don't know about this tall, uh, but these ones for some reason, just, they're just not getting as much height as I would like. And I think when they were starting to grow, um, we got all that smoke and it really kind of stunted their growth a little bit, which is frustrating, but you know, it is what it is. We can't, that's, that's something that we just can't control. So uh, you can see this one has a lot of new growth right here at the bottom. Look at these little ones. Um, super cool so there's this is another new plant there's another fly that it caught um i don't i try not to mess with them uh once they catch the fly and they open up i, I try not to mess with them too much and just kind of let them do their thing um but yeah you can see some more new growth on that one uh oh you can see there's a i think that one's got a fly in there yeah oh yeah 
Oh no, that's a black spot, sorry. Uh, that one's actually, that one must be dying. But I think that there is a fly in that one. And I know sometimes when the fly sits in there for too long, they don't do well. But yeah, you can see, you can see on this side how it's kind of squished down. That little lump right there, that means that it's really tightened down on that fly and it's trying to absorb it, its nutrients. Um, so that, 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 that head's not doing so well. You can see it's got a little bit of black there, but uh, that happens with these guys. You can't control that sometimes, but yeah, lots of new growth. Uh, they look pretty healthy. Like I said, they're not as big as I would like them to be. Um, and I, I think we're getting really close to starting dormancy so that I don't, I don't know that they're going to get a whole lot bigger than they are right now. Uh, we're in mid September and I'm in the Pacific Northwest, so we just don't have a lot of, of nice sunny days left. Um, maybe maybe a half a month if I'm lucky, and then maybe a few days in October will be really nice. Um, but the cold weather is gonna start hitting. I have been bringing these guys in at night because with all the smoke, we've been getting kind of colder weather than normal. Um, and I don't want them to start the, the dormancy yet because I feel like there's a, you know, a, a few more days left of this year where they can get some really good growth and some good sun. So I've been bringing them in at night, uh, but putting them back out as soon as the temperature hits about 60, 65, I'll put them back out. Um, anything below 60, I kind of try to keep them inside. But yeah, I've ha actually, I've, I've changed it up a little bit and I'm sorry that my, my pots are a little dirty, but uh, I have been putting a little bit of water in the bottom here, um, but very little. But what I've noticed is that it absorbs it pretty quick. Like I, I can't hardly keep water in the bottom of this. And it's kind of nice because it's not very much. I might put like a quarter of an inch in there. Um, and it seems like when I started doing that, they did start growing a little better. So I do a little misting at the top and then I do a little bit at the bottom. At first I wasn't doing that because I was worried about root rot. Um, but the more I thought about it, the more I, I realized, you know, these are bog plants. Um, and I don't think, I, I understand that if you put them in a ton of water, uh, you know, if you leave them in a ton of water for a long period of time, there's probably gonna be some root rot and it's probably not gonna be very good for them. But I'm just putting a, about a quarter inch in there. And it seems like that uh, this peat moss and perlite mix is just kind of sucking that water right up and using it. So, and it did seem like it stimulated the growth a little bit on these when they were kind of in a stunted period. So, uh, yeah. So that's my that's my Venus flytrap update. I'm gonna give you a little more good side view here of these guys. Uh, yeah. But uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, guys, so you can see updates on these guys going forward. Um, I'll keep bringing them to you and let you know what I'm doing, what's working, what's not working. Um, I also have some uh, Nepenthes ventrata plant that I'm doing an update for. That one is really cool and it's really killing it. So make sure and check that one out. Uh, and then I'm also doing an update for my Saracenia. That one's somewhere in the middle. Uh, I'm not getting the growth that I'd like, but it does have a lot of new shoots on it. So uh, I'm hopeful that it'll start to do something here soon. But yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Oh, also make sure to check out my website, uh, carnivorousplantshub.com. Um, I got all kinds of cool content there, uh, articles all about uh, Venus flytrap care. Uh, so if you want to learn how to care for your Venus flytrap, that is the place to be. You will learn absolutely everything you need to know. Um, everything from getting your plant to taking care of your plant, watering uh, soil, how to make your own soil, where to buy soil, uh, everything. Everything, including dormancy, everything you can think of. But yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one.